Hey guys and welcome to today's session of Free and Fit. We are using the platform today for a health and wellness event. Jen is an optimal health coach, podcaster and business consultant. After graduating from the University of Michigan Ross School of Business, Jen founded Better Life Now LLC while working full time in hedge funds. So that's no small feat. Well done. <laughs> After over a decade of coaching clients, Jen started a podcast which is called Salad with a Side of Fries to help pay it forward and reach a larger audience to teach the nutrition education. Thanks for having me, guys. First of all, I love the idea of working smarter, not harder, right? And engaging our brain in our physical exercise. I think it's so critical. So we're going to talk about the nutrition side of everything. Everything I do now stems from what I call the nutrition education we're all supposed to know and no one ever taught us. And when I first learned this, I had an aha moment in my life. It is the only thing that's allowed me to say I've kicked my food issues. And so from then on, I set out on a mission to pay it forward and help people help themselves with this information. So everything I do is really focused on education and allowing that education to empower change. Because the reality is it's not all about willpower. Even willpower is science. So what we want to talk about today is how do we look at this from a science perspective and let that empower us, right? So thinking about a healthful life, right? It's we, as we're talking about today, regular exercise, we're gonna tackle that in full. Eating healthfully, so we're gonna tackle that a lot here. Of course, reducing stress and drinking plenty of water. And certainly this little picture makes it seem also very easy, right? But the reality is life happens. Right, we have these health disruptors. So that's everything from the pollution around us, right? The air we're breathing, the water we're drinking, noises that we're hearing all the time. And what's really interesting, uh, we won't really talk about this in detail today, but we've all heard this idea of free radicals, right? And that's why we take antioxidants or we focus on getting antioxidants. And what's really interesting is that our body naturally produces antioxidants, but our body also naturally produces free radicals. So exercise actually releases free radicals in the body. So when you add the free radical production natural to our body, plus all of the environmental factors, our natural antioxidant production does not is insufficient for the amount of free radical damage. Does that make sense? So we want, it's like throwing a thimble of water on a house fire, right? So thank you, Tim. So we really want to think about all the areas in our life. Maybe we're getting sick. Certainly right now, our immune health is of utter importance, right? Maybe you're the person who every flu season gets a cold, right? Or when you're stressed, you get sick, right? Maybe our sleep is suffering whether it's not enough sleep or a lack of quality sleep, right? We try to get everything done in a day and then we're not really resting. We don't have enough time. And of course, that screen time. Uh, We could do a whole other conversation just about blue light and the impact of screen time, especially on our sleep. But it's one of those where just in general, the more we can learn, especially at night, once the sun goes down, to stop looking at screens, the TV, their phone, or computer. Try to, to the extent that you can, time your screen time with daylight, just as a brief side note. But what I really want to get into is our energy. How are we feeling each day? Are you like the rock, right, (laughs) where you're ready to go? Or are you sort of like energy? I don't know, like I wake up and I am just, it is all I can do to get through the day. And that's cool, like I hear you and that's why we're here. It's really about, and you don't have to be the rock, right? To have energy. It's really just about understanding how we fuel ourselves is intrinsically connected in how we feel, right? How we fuel ourselves is intrinsically connected to how we feel. So let's look at this. And what I call proper fuel is understanding low glycemic impact eating. Before we get to that though, let's just look at this bar that's in the middle of the screen. So over at number one, let's say this is breakfast, right? Most people for breakfast maybe eat a bagel 
or a croissant, right? So bagel, we get a short spurt of energy. We're up to number four. We have a short spike of energy and then we drop, right? And mid-morning, late morning, we're hungry again, but it's not quite lunchtime. So what do we have, right? Something that's gonna bring our energy back up. And the reason why that happens is because of improper fuel. Here's the other thing that's super crazy about this. When our blood sugar is high, either because we've eaten high glycemic impact things like the bagel and the croissant or a cupcake, right? Or a cookie, they're delicious, <laughs> right? Sometimes even the cereals that we think are really helpful spike our blood sugar. When our blood sugar is too high, our body is storing fat. So are you guys familiar with the with I Love Lucy? It was an old American TV show years ago. Are you guys familiar with this? I'm not. <laughs> okay. So she was she was a comedian and there was this episode where she and her friend needed jobs. So they went to this candy factory and they candy was coming down the conveyor belt and their job was to wrap the candy and put it back on the conveyor belt to go to the next station. They were afraid of the woman who was running the candy factory. And this was their last chance. Like they could not make a mistake, right? So when the conveyor belt was coming at a nice even pace, they could wrap the candy and put it back on the conveyor belt for the next spot. When it was coming, then as they were doing it, the conveyor belt was speeding up and it got to the point where they couldn't keep up and they just started shoving the chocolates, the candies, anywhere in their body, in their hat, in their mouth, in their pockets, anywhere so that an unwrapped candy did not get to the next station on the conveyor belt. And the crazy part is our body sort of works the same way. So when fuel is coming at a nice even pace, our body produces insulin Insulin carries all that fuel to our muscles and our cells to be used for energy. When we eat high glycemic impact foods, it's like flipping a switch. So that could be we go to the restaurant and we start with the bread basket. That bread flips the switch. It speeds up the conveyor belt. Our body overproduces insulin. Okay, so then insulin and all this fuel is going to our muscles and our cells. Well, our muscles and our cells can only take in so much fuel at a time, and then they close. And as it travels around the body, eventually, all of our muscles and our cells are at capacity in terms of the fuel they can take in. But we have more because we have that added insulin and all this extra fuel. And our body stores that as, our, as fat because our lovely fat cells never close like all of our other muscles and cells that are used for, you know, organ function and breathing and our heart and all the things that our body does that we don't even think about. So when our blood sugar is too high, we store excess as fat. When our blood sugar is too low, so we've dropped to like that number five in the picture here, that could happen because we haven't eaten enough or we haven't eaten in a very long time. So I see this a lot. We get busy and we forget to eat a meal and then all of a sudden it's dinner time and we're just ravenous, right? What happens when our blood sugar is too low is that our body still operates as if we were cavemen. And in the cavemen era, when we were hunters and gatherers, we didn't necessarily know when the next meal was coming. So when we don't fuel our body regularly, it's an indication that it's a time of famine. And our body says, okay, the next thing I get, I'm gonna hold on to so that I can survive, right? Fat is fuel stored to be used later. The problem is our body doesn't know that, you know, there's a refrigerator full of food that we're choosing not to eat. So when our blood sugar is too low, our body stores everything as fat. So the objective is to keep our blood sugar levels in this middle zone, the one, two, three, six, seven, eight in this picture, where we're never storing fat, either because our blood sugar is too high or too low. We're always in this zone where we're never storing fat. And what's magical, although I always say weight loss and energy is science, not magic, but what's magical is that when we're consistent, keeping our blood sugar levels even, and our body knows that it's never a time of famine, our body will actually release the fat stores that it's been holding on to. 
So now I know what you're asking me is what is low glycemic impact eating? What do I do to keep my blood sugar levels in that middle zone, right? Here you go. If you're taking notes or screenshots, screenshot this one, take this one down. Protein and fiber at every meal makes removing fat no big deal. Protein and fiber at every meal makes removing fat no big deal. So protein is clean, lean protein. Fiber is vegetables and sometimes fruit. And a meal is every time we eat, whether it's a big meal or a snack, the only difference is how much we eat. So meal versus snack is just how much and therefore how long it would last us, right? A smaller amount of food will last us less time than a larger amount of food. So protein and fiber at every meal makes removing fat no big deal. And then we have these essential vitamins and minerals. So we get a lot of these vitamins and minerals through the vegetables and fruits that we're choosing to eat. But if you guys heard of essential vitamins and minerals, do you know what that means? So essential means that your body can't make them on its own. So if we can't make them, we have to take them, right? Essential. You can't make them, you have to take them, which means we want to make sure we're eating foods that supply these vitamins and minerals. And I often recommend a high quality vitamin and mineral supplement to fill in these gaps because certainly in the U.S. our food supply is actually deficient. Um, even an apple today doesn't have the same nutrition as an apple that our grandparents ate you know, 20 years ago or 40 years ago. So vitamins, essential vitamins and minerals mean that we have to take them. Now these are mostly your fat soluble vitamins, A, D, E, and K, and also your B vitamins. So remember B vitamins are tremendous for energy. They are also depleted really quickly when we're stressed. So make sure to, I know a lot of people, there's a lot of buzz around B12. B vitamins act like a family. They all have to be invited to the party. So you want a B complex, <laughs> right? We don't want to isolate our B vitamins. We want a B complex that gives us all of them. And if you can find them in the activated form, the methylated form of the vitamin, your body will be better able to use them and you'll get the benefits of it. And if you have questions about any kind of vitamins and supplements and things like that, we can certainly connect after today. And now today certainly is focused on exercise, right? So when we talk about fueling our exercise, we wanna think about what activity we're doing, how often we're doing it, and how intense is it? So what I love about what Debbie shared too is that he was talking about, you know, efficiency of the exercise, doing it with intention and intensity allows us to, you know, limit the duration. We can get a lot of benefit out of it without feeling like we have to spend our whole lives in the gym. So when it comes to fueling our activity, think activity, frequency, and intensity. Okay. And then how do we properly fuel? One of the things I want you guys to remember is that addition, so you've muscle, sorry, protein and fiber at every meal makes you moving fat. No big deal. The other one is muscle dictates metabolism. If we want to burn more all the time when we're sitting and sleeping and all of those things, muscle dictates metabolism. So we want to build muscle. That's the resistance training, using our muscles, right? So you want to give your body protein within one hour of exercise. That additional protein helps the body repair. Because what we do when we do strength training is that we create little tears in the muscle fibers. And when they rebuild, they get stronger muscles made out of protein, right? Think about if you eat animal protein, the part of the animal that you eat is the muscle. So in order to repair that, we need to give our body proper protein. So an extra serving of protein before or after your workout is key. And that could be even just like two ounces. It doesn't need to be a whole lot. Sleep, right? I know we could do a whole separate conversation about sleep, but proper sleep and deep sleep is critical for recovery, right? Recovery, giving your body some time. So you have a lot of personal trainers here today who are giving you exercise things to do. And just as important as the activity is the recovery. And how do we do that? So that can be even something more like, 
yoga, meditation, stretching, sleep, right? Taking a rest, maybe walking one day instead of doing every day super intense. Of course, nutrition like we talked about today. When it comes to your exercise, think about the best time of day for you. There's science on both sides that says working out in the morning is better, working out in the evening is better. Here's what I want you to know, whatever time of day you will actually do it is the best time of day, <laughs> right? Find an activity that you enjoy. So you're gonna hear from a lot of different people today with a lot of different options. Do what you love, do what makes you happy, find something that you enjoy doing because that's when you'll do it, right? And I always say we do a lot of work to learn to love our bodies. And the more over time you can learn to work out because you love your body, instead of because we're punishing our body or we're trying to change in a negative connotation of change, right? The better off we'll be. And then remember, of course, intensity changes the body. Like Debbie was showing us, right? The more we put our mind to it, the smarter we move, the more we'll change the body. So here's the deal, guys. I wanna make sure we have some time for question and answer. So as I said, you know, I came to all of this through my own background and I'm on a mission to pay it forward and help people help themselves. So if you're interested in connecting with me, I have a couple links up here. The one on the left, the KIT Gen, that's keep in touch. That will help you, that will enable you to join our email list. I send like one email a month and then I do wellness webinars each month. So stuff more along these lines, uh, you'll hear about each month. And then I'm offering everybody who participates today a complimentary 30 minute wellness chat. So you can use the Gen Cal link to schedule that. And of course, Salad with a Side of Fries is my podcast. More of this information all the time. We do one episode every single week. There's over a year's worth of content already there for you. If you want to connect with Jen, her IG is at Jen Trapic. Feel free to listen to the podcast, of course. That's gonna give you a lot of the education. Um, reach out to me, Instagram, WhatsApp, whatever, and let's connect to hear your personal story and what's going on for you. Thank you very much, Jen.